application, Fresh Pond Auto Sales Incorporated has applies for a used car dealer Class 2 license at 307, Fre 307 Fresh Pond Parkway. Eddie Lackett with the proposed manager of record. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. A card for the record. Thank you. Please state your state and spell your names for the Thank record. You. Uh, my name is Ted Regnante. I'm an attorney at 401 Edgewater Place in Wakefield, Massachusetts, and I represent the uh, uh, petitioner. Uh, with me to my right is my associate, uh, Jesse Schoma, uh, who prepared the application and has some uh, renderings to show you. Hans Strauch, who was the architect, and Eddie Larkas, who was the uh, owner uh, of the uh, owner and, and uh, all of the offices in the corporation that's applying for the uh, Class two license. Thank you. So before we continue, did you, um, I need spellings on your last name because I have no idea how oh, to spell sorry. it. <laughs> it's Regnante, that's R-E-G-N-A-N-T-E. -E. Okay, great. Thank you. And Jesse? It's J-E-S-S-E-S-C-H-O-M-E-R. And Eddie? Uh, okay. So, first name E D D I E, and last name L A K K I S. Thank you. Hans H A N S Straub S T -E R A U C H. Sounds Thank like you. the United Nations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Go ahead, Counselor. So let me uh, review. Uh, the application with you and the premises. This, of course, is for a class two use, used uh, auto license. Uh, the tax lot is 26076, which is 307 uh, Fresh Pond Parkway in Cambridge at the intersection of Fresh Pond Parkway and Vassal Lane. And Jesse is showing you that uh, location in, uh, in relationship to the existing properties. The lot is 13,909 square feet with an existing uh, restaurant that has not been used and frankly is a terrible, terrible eyesore to the neighborhood. And there's a parking lot associated with it. That uh, building, as we'll talk about, and the architect is going to go into it in more detail, uh, will be rebuilt so that terrible eyesore will be removed for a very attractive uh, new building. Uh, both, uh, you'll see the exterior in a minute and the interior layout. Uh, the property is in an existing business A zone, so used uh, auto sales are allowed as a matter of right. And we do have as part of the application uh, the sign-off, the zoning sign-off, uh, and uh, we, we have been issued, we spent a great deal of time with the city with regard to designing this building. Uh, we worked probably for three or four months on this with the building department, and we have been issued a building permit for the property, uh, so all that is in line. The, uh, uh, Eddie's family is the fifth generation family to own and operate uh, uh, automotive businesses in the city of Cambridge. Uh, they have uh, existing facilities as well as, and this is very important, adjacent to the site, uh, Abe's Auto Service uh, on the Fresh Pond Parkway, which his dad operates a uh, service business on that site. So that one of the important things that I know you look at is whether or not the applicant has the capacity to uh, to repair vehicles. So, so we have that, and again, it's a related business. It's uh, uh, that business is run by his dad, uh, Eli. Eddie is going to be uh, the person completely in charge of, of the of the new business. Uh, he's uh, worked with his father for many years. Uh, they acquired this property at 307 Fresh Pond Parkway in 2014, and as I indicated, their intent is to rebuild the existing facility and convert it into an automotive showroom, 
where the used cars will be displayed inside, not outside. Uh, the parking spaces outside will, of course, be for employees and customers. Uh, we're going to be restriping the existing parking lot, installing bicycle parking, uh, something the city requested us to do, adding extensive landscaping and decorative screening fences around the property to make it more attractive to the neighbors in the area. The uh, Eddie will operate the used car business as president of the corporation that we filed, Fresh Pond Auto Sales, Inc. Uh, that corporation will enter into a lease with EMJR, who owns the property, and EMJR is uh, a related entity. It's the family business that owns the real estate. But we've, uh, we have a five-year lease uh, with two five-year additional options to extend. So we have control of the property under the lease. And we will have a permanent and ongoing service contract with a auto service, uh, even though it's, it's related, but we'll have that under contract. Uh, unlike many used car sales uh, businesses that operate on open lots, uh, we'll have this beautifully uh, uh, newly constructed building with the showroom, uh, and we'll have, of course, the service next door to address any issues. Um, I think that's basically it. I think what I'd like to do is have the architect talk a little bit about the building, because in the event that there are people here in the audience uh, from the area, I think they'd be interested in and Looking just for the, the record, the proposed hours are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and then Sunday, noon to 6 p.m.? That's correct. We've stated on the application, which is consistent with, with automobile dealerships in general. And by the way, there is a dealership right in that area. There's the Honda dealership, which I know you're familiar with. So let me turn it over to Hans. And Hans, will yep. you talk about the area? Will you talk about the the building itself, the exterior, the interior, and the site layout. Councilor, before start, you start. Before you start, a yes. quick question. As he was describing it, as Councilor was describing it, he said the restaurant building will be removed, and then at one point he said rebuilt. So is it being incorporated into the new structure, or is it being raised? And Actually, good question. Um, what's going to happen is is that uh, the foundation of the existing building, the, the actual footprint, mm -hmm. will be replicated and its height will be replicated. So basically the volume that is on the site right now will be the same volume that we will create. But the existing so structure is being raised. raised. There are elements of the existing structure that we will we may be able to reuse, but it's all going to be code compliant and will be um, uh, will be reviewed in our uh, in our construction. But we have received a building permit uh, under the what may be retained as part of the structural yes, elements part of, of the, the building, but right. the the outside, which Hans will, will review, will, you know, will, will be. So you're all obviously very familiar with the property. It's a pretty <coughs> ugly property. Just so you know, we were the architects for this building down here, which is 355 Fresh Pond Parkway, which has the Bank of America at one end. And that's probably why the family <laughs> hired us to help them. Uh, it's, that, it's not the Taj Mahal, it's just a very ugly building and we are trying to clean up the property and make it look very presentable um, on, a, on, on the uh, parkway itself. It was subject to the requirements of the uh, overlay district in the zoning uh, regard, regarding how the design would, would, e it would evolve. So, in any case, uh, what we're planning to do, as I have mentioned, there we go, is it's not, a, not terribly complicated as we're replicating the volume of the building that exists now, putting in large, uh, large glass transparent windows, obviously, to allow transparency from the street into the use, and then putting up new metal panels, and panel uh, sort of more of a high-tech system of metal panels that you would associate with um, automotive use on the outside of the building. One thing that you don't see on this drawing, which was requested, which we will be doing, requested by uh, community development, was to add uh, awnings at the two entrances, one here 
toward the street side and the other on the side of the building. Awnings, you said? Yes, just little uh, sort of fabric awnings to give some life. We will have exterior lighting uh, for safety and uh, to mark the entrances as well. And then uh, as far as the overall organization of the, um, of the area, which is right now all uh, pavement in a disarray, we will be putting in new trees along the street. Uh, was at with one of the requests of the community was to widen the sidewalk. Apparently, bicyclists and people come back and forth here on their way to uh, Fresh Pond itself. So we we have widened the sidewalk using uh, sort of a, a cobblestone, nice landscape edging. I think it was about 18 inches or so, or two feet. I'd have to look at the drawings, but in any case, we've widened it. Uh, we have lighting off the building as well as freestanding lights to light the parking lot for safety and uh, we are 100% um, handicapped accessible at both entrances to the building. Uh, and so. did I, um, the parking spaces outside, these are going to be for, you said, employees and customers, so all the used cars will be inside, inside the, building. the building. Correct. Yeah. How many cars do you think? How many cars do you think there would be inside? Uh, whatever the layout would allow after construction, I'm assuming around 2025. This is what it looks like now. So basically, we're trying to clean up an eyesore uh, with the use of uh, our zoning. Um, we, to a certain extent, that's what we did at the uh, corner where the old fish market used to be and uh, created a very nice retail building at that end. Um, we expect that this building will also be equally uh, as equally uh, uh, presentable. And the lighting in the parking lot, is that going to be overhead light? What kind cut of lighting? Off, zero cutoff type lighting. Um, it was reviewed uh, as part of our application to the um, building department. They were very particular about it. Um, so it's not going to be in the neighbor's eyes. It's a specific kind of it was called zero cutoff. Uh, lighting and we did display in our drawings the proper lumens, uh, you know, for safety purposes um, throughout the parking lot. So there'll be no overspill on, on, across the property. Will the building be sprinkled? It'll be sprinkled. Sprinkled, yes. It'll be reviewed. Uh, it has been reviewed by the fire department for the uh, for the um, for the permit. Yes. One thing that I did neglect to mention under Chapter 140, Section 59. It's a requirement that the business be principal business, his principal business, which will be, he will, Eddie will devote full time to this business. And, um, and Mr. Lackis, you have experience with the used car dealers, correct? Yes. And so you're aware of all your duties under the law? Yes. And uh, also your bond requirements for this type of license? Yes. Jesse, did I leave anything out on the application? The only thing I would add, Madam Chair, is that we do have a copy of the, the lease for the premises to file, and we also have proof of service of the mailings to a Thank you. Just swing those over to Elizabeth and she can give them to us. Thank you. Do you guys have any other questions? I don't. I, I actually do. So, um, you state that all the vehicles that will be for sale will be inside the building. Correct. So if a customer comes in and is interested in, in purchasing a vehicle and wants to test drive a vehicle, how are you going to handle that? Uh, there will be an overhead door facing the parking lot, uh, about 12, 14 Right. There's, uh, on the so they're on the facades of the building. We don't have a facade drawing, but there's an overhead door right here. So the cars come in and out at this location. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a worst case scenario from a from a business standpoint. If somebody comes in and they want to test drive the vehicle that's the furthest removed from that overhead door, now what are you gonna do? Well uh, position the layout inside will always be accessible for any vehicle to make it out without having to move more than one car. Okay. Second question. Um, so your family runs or owns the uh, brick building that's immediately adjacent to this property? Correct. And the gas, the mobile station as well? Correct. Okay. 
And that is one of the key issues uh, in any consideration of a Class II license is the availability of those services. Any discussions with Cambridge Honda? There'll be no opposition. There'll definitely be no opposition. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone in favor of this petition? Anyone in opposition to this petition? I, I'm not necessarily one or the other, but I do have some questions. May I sure, ask yeah. them? If you could please state your name for the record. Um, I'm Jan Devereaux. I'm a city councilor, but I'm here in my capacity as a uh, very near neighbor uh, who is very familiar with the site. I'm certainly uh, extremely appreciative that it will no longer be a derelict building. Um, that will that will be a bonus to us all. Um, I do have some concerns about assurances that it will be run in compliance uh, with this Class Two license, based on my lived in the neighborhood since 1999, and uh, the auto repair next door doesn't necessarily fall follow all of the the rules that they're supposed to follow. For instance, cars are routinely parked on the grass, and these are cars that are, I'm assuming, being offered for sale because they're sort of vintage, you know, cars that are there on a regular basis. Um, they're parked on the grass. Auto parts and junk are stored behind the garage in a very haphazard way. If you go into the Tobin parking lot and you look through the fence with the sort of green uh, plastic screen, you can see a whole bunch of junk all the time. It's not neat, not tidy, and I don't believe that's in compliance with the existing license. The parking lot, for the past couple of years, the parking lot at this property has been used, we've been told, for employee parking, and I do see employees coming early in the morning when I'm out walking my dog, but cars are there overnight their cars in various states of disrepair. Some of them uh, were there for months at a time, have flat tires, clearly aren't moving. So I'm kind of wondering where all those cars are going to go, uh, because it's clearly been very convenient for the businesses next door to have this additional lot to store junky cars or cars that are awaiting repair next door. Um, it would seem to me fairly fundamental for someone operating a business where the car sales are required to happen indoor to have a firm idea of how many cars that facility can fit and how they will be able to get in and out. It's not a huge building. 25 cars seems like a lot, but I'm not an architect, so I don't see in any of these drawings any sort of layout that would show how those cars are gonna get in and out and navigate structural supports areas that are cut out for, you know, the salesperson to do the paperwork, all of that. Um, so I guess I have, I mean, on paper, it sounds certainly like an improvement, but I am concerned about compliance. Uh, I am very concerned about lighting. Ranjit can tell you that we are in currently in uh, some discussions with Cambridge Honda about lighting that they installed that has pretty egregious light pollution. Um, concerns about security, I think, are overstated. I am not aware of any car thefts in this neighborhood. It's a residential neighborhood. Um, the idea of having lights on all night, uh, to me, seems unnecessary, and, you know, it's a a very high profile area in terms of being directly across from Fresh Pond Reservation. It's, I, you know, I, and next door to the school. So I would want to see uh, a very firm understanding of that they understand their responsibilities in this license and that there will be enforcement so that it doesn't become another case where the neighbors are forced to complain about non compliance. I mean, it's pretty natural. Cambridge Honda has had constant sign violations. It's like whack-a-mole. There are, you know, all of the 
cars have banners on them. There are lots of temporary banners that are there for months on end. It, you know, it looks junky, and that is not in line with what the zoning says. So it is as of right, but only if it's the letter of the law is followed. So those are my reservations. I do certainly appreciate that they're trying to improve this, and it's been a huge uh, sore spot in the neighborhood for many, many years to have this building in the condition it is. The fence, they put up a temporary fence several years ago. It's, you know, it's, it's a dreadful eyesore, so something needs to change, and I hope this will be an improvement, but I guess I'm somewhat skeptical, but thank you. Thank you. Um, May I respond and just, to that? Yeah. And just for the record, the, um, we don't license the uh, repair shop. Uh, we don't issue that type of license. But I would want Mr. Lackis uh, to tell us what, what steps are you going to take to make sure that that parking lot is being just used by your employees and customers? It will be just but used by employees and customers. I know, but what steps are you going to take to make sure that that happens? We'll put signs up. Uh, uh, we'll reinforce it. We'll have an attendant. As we already do, we have an attendant always walking the parking lot. We'll make sure his supervision will extend out to that parking lot. And Councilor, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, first of all, I appreciate your comments very much. And I, what I have done uh, in the past in, in other comparable situations has offered my services that if you if there is a particular problem, I'll give you my card. You call me, and I'm, I'm happy to sit down with you and work out whatever whatever the issues are. Uh, and so I, I offer that to you as an intermediary uh, to address your concerns on an ongoing ongoing basis. But we do appreciate uh, you know the comments that you've made. The other thing that I have done uh, in other and I don't know this is frankly my first time before you, you folks, but I do quite a bit of this work uh, and. Uh, one of the things that I have done in the past is suggest that as part of the approval, if you were so inclined to, to grant this, is to have a provision for continuing jurisdiction. So you would have, it would state right in the permit continuing jurisdiction. So if there was an issue, we'd have to come back in front of you and confront that issue. Well, since we issue the license, we have continuing jurisdiction. Yeah. But I usually put it as something that, uh, you know, the I mean, you can tell your clients that we have continuing jurisdiction, but under the law, we have continuing right. jurisdiction if we issue the license, and the license has to be renewed every year right. uh, in accordance with the law. And obviously, if there are any violations of any rules um, or any laws relating to your license, um, we can certainly bring you in for a hearing, and we would um, if, if we were to grant the license. Um, I think what uh, Councilor Devereaux expressed um, are a variety of issues, some of some of which also don't really fall under us. They fall under zoning and building, and I'm hoping and assuming that they would be addressing those, like the lighting and the type of the structure. Um, and I'm assuming um, that you don't know the exact amount of cars because you haven't finished building the building. Right. But, but you would have an idea, a firm idea, of the number of buildings once the building's done, right. correct? So what, what, what will the square footage be? The uh, building is approximately six, a little over 6,000 square feet. I would say there's no way you can put 20 motor vehicles in 6,000 square feet. I, I would say it's likely there will be less than that. Yeah. I think you'd be doing well to have maybe 10 vehicles in 6,000 square feet. I'm not running the place. Eddie's running no, I, the place. No, I, I, uh, yeah. They and, will I, and I don't have in front of me the, the uh, building code, which, which I think, not certain, but I think would identify what the allotment would be by square footage. Right. I think. Well, would it be certain. helpful uh, if if we submitted a a, a sketch, of, you know, that Hans prepared of of, of a uh, proposed layout, interior layout of the parking? Of the well, uh, cars? I think any submittal is, is helpful in any type of situation like this. And I think you actually submitted, uh, you submitted the showroom, you said where yeah. the offices would be That's and correct. everything else. I just it's don't think there. that many cars are in the, um, I mean, you, you submitted a bunch of... There were plans. So you're going to have, I mean, there's going to be, 
I assume there's, whether it, you know, as Councilor Devereaux mentioned, uh, you know, whether you call them workstations or offices, I assume there'll be restrooms. Yes. There's shown there. Does that building have a basement or is it built on slab? Slab. 